Toronto has just opened its newest light rail line, called Line 6 Finch West, that has seen the city gain 18 new stations and just over 10 kilometers of new light rail track. It has also put the network in a bit of an odd position numerically, as Line 6 opened before the new Lines 3 and 5, leaving an awkward gap in the line numbering system. But Lines 3 and 5 are still being worked on and should eventually open to complete the set. However, between Line 6's recent opening and the ongoing work on Lines 3 and 5, as well as work on other transit projects like Go Expansion, I think Toronto is going through a bit of a transit renaissance. As such, in this video we're going to be looking at how this new light rail line came to be, and what role it has to play in this renaissance. I also think it'd be worth looking at how this project compares to some of Toronto's others, especially its other, more embattled light rail project, the Eglinton Crosstown. Hi all, I'm City Moose, and I make videos about transport and urbanism, so if that sounds interesting to you, consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to support the channel, you can also check out my Ko-fi, I do always appreciate it. Back to the new Line 6 though, and ideas for a line like this originated in Toronto's 2007 Transit City Plan. This quite ambitious plan would have seen seven new light rail lines built in Toronto. Of these seven though, only two have actually managed to progress beyond the planning stages, with those being the Eglinton Crosstown LRT, or Line 5, and today's topic, the Finch West LRT. In that original plan, the new LRT would have started at Subway Line 1's Finch Station, before proceeding westward along Finch Avenue, with another Line 1 interchange at its Finch West Station, and then terminating somewhere near Humber College. In 2010, however, due to budgetary constraints, the Ontario government scaled back the project, dropping the easternmost section between Finch West and Finch stations. These cost savings did little to save the line, as later that year, Rob Ford was elected as Mayor of Toronto and cancelled the whole Transit City project. Thankfully, this decision was overruled by Toronto City Council just two years later, as they voted to restore at least some of the planned lines, including the Eglinton Crosstown and Finch West LRTs. That same year, Metrolinx's board approved the construction of the line, with an intended start date of 2015 and an intended opening date of 2018. These dates wouldn't exactly be met, while early preparatory construction work would begin in 2016, it wasn't until 2019 that major construction work commenced, and of course it's not been until just a few days ago that it actually opened. At its opening, the line would serve 18 new stations, most of which would be simple street level ones, but there were some small below ground sections. The first stop would be on one of those sections at Humber College, where the station was built in a trench. From here, the line would head northwards and cross beneath the intersection of Finch Avenue West and Highway 27 for its first street-level stop at Westmore. From here, the route is pretty simple, as it just follows Finch Avenue eastwards with more street-level stops at Martin Grove, Albion, and Stevenson, which will provide access to the major retail precinct at Albion Mall, Mount Olive, Roan Tree Mills, Peardale, which will provide access to the less major retail precinct at Finchdale Plaza, Duncan Woods, Milvan Rumike, Emery, and Signet Arrow, before crossing under Highway 400 for more stops along Finch Avenue at North Finch Oakdale, which will be near the line's maintenance and storage facility, Jane and Finch, Driftwood, Topamori, and Sentinel, before the line dips back below ground for its only fully underground station at Finch West, where it will offer an interchange with the subway Line 1. This is the full extent of the line, at least for now, and I think it's pretty clear from this map that while it will help a bit with local travel around that part of Toronto, its primary purpose is to be a feeder route for the Line 1 subway. But then, of all the Transit City plans, why did this one survive to actually get built? Well, the primary purpose of the line is to replace the Route 36 Finch West bus, which is one of the busiest bus routes in Toronto, carrying around 45,000 people each weekday. This is a lot of demand for a bus route, and these buses were often overcrowded. To make matters worse, they also had to share road space with cars and other vehicles, so they would frequently get stuck in traffic. Add to this the fact that Finch Avenue is quite far away from Toronto's core, and people would have to take a slow and unreliable bus service before changing for a pretty long subway service to reach downtown. Now, Line 6 won't be able to do much to reduce the distance of the subway service, but it could at least improve the step before the subway. The line will be using new 48 meter long Alstom Citadel Spirit light rail vehicles with a maximum capacity of almost 300 people per vehicle, 120 of which could be seated. For a point of comparison, Toronto's articulated buses have a seated capacity of 46, so this is a pretty big capacity improvement, which will definitely help reduce that overcrowding. 
In addition, the line will operate entirely within its own dedicated lanes, which should mean no more getting stuck in traffic for the transit passengers, and that should mean faster and more reliable journeys. In theory, at least. Since its opening, people have been complaining about how slow the line is, taking around 55 minutes to go from one end to the other. That said, I'm going to reserve any judgments on the line's speed until at least a few months after its opening. I remember when the L2 and L3 light rail lines opened in Sydney and people were not happy with the speed of those lines either, which similarly took around 50 minutes to make their journeys. But fast forward to today and those lines are now much faster, with journeys taking closer to around 35 minutes, so I expect we'll see similar speed ups for Toronto's Line 6. It does look like the TTC is aware of the issue and is already looking for ways to improve the line's speed, including potentially adding traffic signal priority, which I think would be a great addition. The fact that this line has opted to use dedicated lanes at street level does provide a nice contrast to its sister light rail project, Line 5 Eglinton. While Line 5 also has some street running sections within dedicated lanes, the majority of that line's route and stations have been built below ground. Line 5 has also become kind of notorious for how long it's taken to build and how expensive its total cost has become. Line 6's construction and opening dates might have been delayed, which is unfortunate but not uncommon with these sorts of very large infrastructure projects, but nowhere near as much as Line 5's. Line 5 also cost a whole lot more than Line 6, at 13 billion Canadian dollars versus about 2.5 billion for Line 6. Now, Line 5 is about 9 kilometers longer than Line 6 and has 7 more stations, but that obviously doesn't justify the cost or build time differences. Instead, I think a clear reason for this huge contrast is that Line 6 has stuck to what light rail as a transport mode does well, providing a relatively dense set of stops along a cheap to build at grade alignment. Whereas Line 5 has opted for a sort of hybrid approach that has seen the line combine all the drawbacks of light rail, slower speeds, lower capacities and having to wait at traffic lights, with all the drawbacks of a full subway, mainly being very expensive and slower to build. The Eglinton Crosstown has sort of found itself in a worst of both worlds scenario, where it probably wouldn't have been that much more expensive to build it as a full subway, given most of it's underground anyway, but instead, what we've ended up with is just a very, very expensive light rail line. Now, choosing to build at street level was a much easier decision for the Finch West LRT, as Finch West Avenue is mostly quite a bit wider than Eglinton Avenue, so there was more space for the trams. But that only reinforces my view that the Eglinton Crosstown should have either doubled down on light rail and accepted some car lanes would be lost, or just bitten the bullet and gone full subway. But before I start sounding like I think Line 6 is unequivocally better than Line 5, I do think there are a few areas where Line 5 is the winner, namely around the line's connectivity. As I said earlier, while I think Line 6 will see some use for local trips made along its route, it does link to some significant retail and education precincts, I think by far its biggest use case will be as a feeder service to the Finch West subway station, its only major interchange. And in that sense, it's not really providing much more than the old 36 bus route. Line 5 Eglinton, on the other hand, connects with no less than three GO Transit lines, the UP Express Airport train, Subway Line 1 at two different stations, as well as Subway Line 2. On top of that, there will be at least one additional connection when the Ontario line opens. This will mean Line 5 is going to be useful for way more than just taking someone from their home to a single subway stop, and will instead form a much more integrated part of the city's transport network. By connecting with so many different lines, it opens up a whole range of new use cases, and makes it much easier for people living on the line to get to way more of Toronto. In contrast, someone living along Line 6 and wanting to get anywhere other than somewhere along that line or along the western leg of Line 1 is likely to have a fairly inconvenient journey due to how little Line 6 connects with the rest of the transport network. Now, it is worth noting there are some potential plans to fix that in the form of possible extensions for the line. One of these, and the most obvious in my opinion, would bring back the eastern leg of the line to Finch, which would add a connection with Subway Line 1's eastern side. It even crosses the Barry Go line, but that doesn't have a station along Finch Avenue for an easy transfer, though that's not to say one couldn't be added. There is also potential for a westward extension that could see the line go to the currently under construction Woodbine Go station, where it would offer an interchange with Go Transit's Kitchener line as well as the Up Express Airport train. 
there is even potential for the line to provide a direct link to the airport itself. Looking back at the eastern side of the line and another potential extension would see the line go even further to Don Mills Road before proceeding south along that road to connect with Subway Line 4 at Don Mills. It would even have a potential connection with GO Transit's Bloomington line along that route. At present, none of these extensions have been confirmed, but as Line 6 has only just opened, I think we will have to wait and see how it performs before more extensions to it are put in motion. That said, I do hope they are. Any one of these extensions I mentioned would elevate this line from just a feeder service to Subway Line 1 to a highly integrated part of Toronto's transport network that's able to accommodate way more different types of journeys. Regardless, I'm glad to see Toronto continuing to work on its transit system. I think continually growing and improving a city's transport network is really valuable, quite like how it's worth continually working on and investing in yourself. And that's why I've recently been finding taking short lessons with Brilliant has been such an important addition to my daily routine. I think that learning a little bit every day is one of the most important things you can do, and Brilliant does an amazing job at keeping you motivated and on track to reach your learning goals, with its mix of engaging problems, competitive features, and daily encouragement. It's also available on both my phone and my computer, so it's easy to learn even when I'm out the house. In my day job, I work as a software designer, and as such, I've been taking Brilliant's Programming with Python course to help myself better understand the programming side of software development. Like basically all of Brilliant's courses, it starts off by getting you to master the foundations, so that you can level up to increasingly challenging problems, which has really helped me reach some serious learning goals. Especially with the new year coming around, many people are looking to build new habits and improve themselves. So if you want to make giving your brain a daily workout your new year's goal, head to brilliant.org forward slash city moose or scan the QR code on screen. You can start learning for free, and Brilliant is giving my viewers 20% off an annual premium subscription. Again, that's brilliant.org forward slash city moose if you'd like to give it a go. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to support the channel, you can also check out my Kofi. It is always greatly appreciated. But with that all said, I'm Kyle, aka City Moose, and as always, thanks for watching.